belated happy new year guys and what better way to start the new year than by celebrating the best that 2013 had to offer and also by talking about the worst so we know what mistakes not to commit in 2014. So this is gonna be like a bottom five list of the worst movies I saw last year and I know the usual thing is that top 10 or like a bottom 10 but I only wanted to do five because number one I don't really like talking about movies I don't like I feel like I don't deserve to make a list of 10 because I really try not to watch things that I don't think I'm going to enjoy so I did watch a lot of bad stuff but I wanted to narrow it down to five because I could point out five movies that I just, there was nothing redeemable about these five movies at number five we have a perfect example of the January is filled with bad movies stereotype and also another really good reason why we shouldn't be remaking all these horror classics and that is Texas Chainsaw 3D. First of all, I don't know why the title is just Texas Chainsaw 3D. I mean, what if you watch it in 2D? It's not 3D anymore. And what does Texas Chainsaw even mean? Like a chainsaw made in Texas? Or like, I, I don't even know why they did that title anyway. Okay, so the biggest problem Texas Chainsaw 3D has is that it completely disregards everything about the franchise. It's apparently now the official sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre back in like 1974, I think. That means all the other sequels and remakes that came after that are now not canon. This is our official sequel. And it, it just ruins everything that the original had going for it. I don't think a lot of people realize that the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is very, has very little blood in it. It's mostly a psychological movie, which I think is great, and it's really a triumph of psychological horror and uh, that kind of editing, because we were just shown like lots of like disturbing images and like close-ups of the, the people in peril and stuff, and it added to the fear without really uh, giving us jump scares and stuff like that. But now, Texas Chainsaw 3D has become a generic slasher movie, and it's, it's full of gore, it's full of uh, girls in, like wearing nothing, and they also get the character of Leatherface wrong. I don't know how you do that. Based on just the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you don't really know anything about Leatherface other than the fact that he's a very simple-minded uh, kind of killer guy. Like, he doesn't doesn't feel like he kills because he's evil. He kills because he doesn't really know anything else. And they get that wrong here. Like, they treat Leatherface like he's like an adult and, you know, he he makes decisions and stuff. Also, there's, there's something about like the timeline is all me messed up, like if this is a sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre which happened in the 70s and the characters here look like about 20. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the plot, ha, ah, plot. Texas Chainsaw 3D is about like uh, this, this girl who gets a letter saying that she inherited this house from from her grandma or something and they, they travel to Texas to uh, claim the house, like she and her friends and they discover Leatherface is hiding in the basement. I'm wondering though, like, if these characters are about 20 years old, that makes the time period, it's supposed to be like the 90s, right? But there are people here who have like iPhones and stuff. Logic. Okay, so that number four is a movie I kind of feel bad about putting up here because I tried to like it, and it's not really offensive in any way, but it's just, it's just so lazily done, and that is R.I.P.D. R.I.P.D. is pretty much Men in Black meets Supernatural. It's like a it's like a police force where they hunt down uh, ghosts and spirits that, that live among the living. And that is like a really interesting premise, that's the reason why I watched it. And I tried so hard to like it, but there's really nothing to like about it. First of all, there's like no chemistry between uh, Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges. And this is the best way I like explaining chemistry. It's when actor A and actor B are in a scene together, it shouldn't feel like actor A plus actor B. It should feel like C. It, it should feel like they're interacting together and they're, you know, combining, you know, chemistry. It's it's the study of change, as Walter White said. And Ryan Reynolds really feels like he's like doing his own thing and Jeff Bridges feels like he's doing his own thing. It almost feels like they're not making eye contact. And the other aspects of the movie are also really lazily done. Like, the CGI actually looks unfinished and it's not, like, on an aesthetic level, it doesn't even look good. And the plot itself is, it's, I don't even remember what the plot is, really. It's something about... Uh, Kevin Bacon and that's all you really need to know but and R.I.P.D. is something that tries to be an action movie a comedy a buddy cop thing and like e elements of fantasy in it 
and it just fails at every single one of these. It's not funny. It's not the action scenes aren't. I, they're not. Yeah, you know, they're not choreographed well. They're, they don't look good. And the fantasy elements, as I said, the lore isn't good either. So, fortunately, RPD just it's it's not good. Okay, so I do have some local movies on this too. I have a couple, um, and whenever I do a list like this, uh, the movies that will probably end up here are gonna be local movies from independent festivals because I don't know why, but when it comes to an independent festival, I try to watch every single one of them. And my number three comes from last year's Cinema Live Film Festival, which had some of the best movies of the year. Also had one of the worst, and that is The Diplomat Hotel. The Diplomat Hotel is a movie that. When I finished watching it, I couldn't call it a movie. It did feel like a movie. It felt like the first draft of a high school video for like a class project. And in fact, the first draft of that might even seem better than The Diplomat Hotel. Like 60 to 70 percent of the shots in this movie, for some reason, were out of focus. Why is that? I don't know. Also, I don't really understand the characters, if you can call them characters. Again, there's a lack of chemistry here. There's a group of people who go to uh, the Diplomat Hotel, which is a real hotel in ruins now in Baguio here in the Philippines and you know, they experience kooky stuff but the characters here, they all have like their own different story but each is handled so poorly and you never really get the feeling that uh, these people are in it together I mean, good slasher movies, good horror movies uh, have a good sense of people being in a situation together I also don't see any plot, it's just people walking around in the diplomat hotel and they start being chased by things which is it's just edited so badly it's uh and then the plot tries to do this thing where it becomes a psychological thriller near the end when they have the characters turn on each other but at that point you don't care about anything and i was literally just waiting for it to end and of course it's not scary like the diplomat hotel is not scary you don't get any ghosts or anything you don't see anything except like one frame of like someone in a wheelchair and that is not scary okay there's a difference between scary and jump scares because Jump scares are just cheap, you know. Um, there, there can be jump scares that are scary, but those are very hard to find. Okay, at number two, and this is this is just a fun movie to talk about because it's so bad. Uh, Sadako 3D2. Yes, that's the title. Like, you don't even see Sadako in this movie. You see a little girl who is not scary. It's just bad CGI everywhere. Uh, it's just... Mm, it's fun to talk about because these scares, again, they don't make sense. And I listed down, like some examples and they're really fun to talk about for that. Okay, there's a scene where like I think a woman gets attacked by the virus in her phone and she falls out of her apartment or something like that and she lands on the street and her main character passes by and suddenly for absolutely no reason at all this woman who fell turns into like a zombie and attacks her and the, the main character she runs screaming back into her apartment and we never see the zombie again like what is that about? And then there's a scene where the main character is in like a prison she talks to this guy who knows something about Sadako and after she talks to the guy, the guy turns around and walks off in, like, through the hallway which is all pitch black and then suddenly a hand comes zooming out and then when you just see the main character go like and then she walks away why was that in the movie? Like, what does it have to do with anything? my favorite example of that is uh, I think this is after the zombie scene, I don't even know anymore uh, when the main character runs back to her apartment and the little girl's there and she's oh my gosh, like, the little girl's gonna kill me so she hides in her room and the little girl's like banging on the door it's like, let me in, let me in and so the main character hides under the bed and you see the little girl's legs kinda uh, you just see her feet passing by and predictably of course, like, suddenly some disgusting face like peeks under the bed and screams at the audience but then suddenly Right after this happens, the main character wakes up. It was a dream. It didn't happen. So she wakes up in her room and she's suddenly with her brother, who's apparently in her house. And the brother's like, oh, no, don't worry about it. Like, don't worry about this kid who's terrorizing you. I'm gonna take you home. We're gonna live peacefully. And she's like, oh, really? He's like, yeah. And then he turns into a monster and attacks her. And then the main character wakes up again. They did, a, like, a double dream inception thing. And that's it. It was so stupid, but it was so... Oh, my God. Now what could be worse than that? Well, it's hard for me to describe, but this is the movie I watched last year that I just really hated watching it. Like, I had no idea why people clapped at the end, maybe it's because it was another uh, film festival, but it's just, I was checking my watch the entire time, and as soon as the credits rolled, I was out of the theater in like five seconds. This movie is called Mga Alaala ng Tag-Ulan, which in 
English, for those who don't speak Filipino, it means Memories of Rain. Okay, apparently this movie is like some sort of coming of age sexual awakening thing where this kid, he shares his umbrella with this older woman one day going home from school. And instead of walking home, he brings her all the way to her house and they suddenly engage in this relationship. But it's not even like a believable romantic or sexual relationship. It's, it's not like, like say, the reader. Uh, this relationship of theirs, it's basically them hanging out, reading poetry, I don't know, it's just, and he just kind of stares at her creepily, he's blatantly staring at her chest, and it, like, this, ah, uh, so, well, so that plot is ridiculous because nothing happens in it, and, like, there's no growth with anyone at all, and part of the reason why I don't think there's any growth is because the acting is terrible, like, the main guy, I don't even know your name, I don't care, because you have the same face the entire movie, like, nothing phases you, man, like, you're stoic. The lead actress also plays the, the, the older woman, it's like, uh, she's, just, she's the complete opposite, she overacts everything, and it's just completely uncalled for. The mother and the father characters, though, those are the best, I mean, by best I mean the worst, because the mother is, like, insanely annoying, and she just nags like, about, about everything, but then the dad, he's, he's supposed to be, I think they're trying to paint him as a character who just just quiet but he just takes the abuse but it, it really just looked like a guy sitting in the corner just kind of okay I'm in a movie it's, it, it's just so weird because he uh, he was supposed to have conversations with the kid and they're supposed to like bond but again the kid's talking and the dad's just like okay the, the two things that really really tick me off about this movie are number one the score and throughout the entire running time of this movie they have the same musical score playing throughout the entire movie and it's like this one piano thing and I don't care if it sounded like decent they played it literally literally throughout the entire movie the only scene I remember that didn't have that background score in that one scene instead of having that background score the main character was playing the same song on a piano so ah and the problem with having the score run through the entire thing is that it makes it really makes everything feel so sentimental, feel so stupidly overdramatic. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that the entire movie is narrated by this kid. And... Just think of someone whining but attempting to write poetry at the same time. And, like, the entire movie is narrated by this guy. Like, he's just he's talking about, oh, but I didn't know how to feel about her rejection because my heart was like... And I don't even know, like... Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm fine with narration if it's done well, but here it's like, like in a, in a scene where the father and the son are talking, and the son asks the father, like, hey dad, what do you think about this? And then instead of the dad answering, the, the, the father is still like doing that. And then instead of the father answering, the kid's voice suddenly comes in and answers for the father. Why is that? Why can't you just... <clears throat> I hated watching it. It's... it's it took itself way too seriously, and oh. so yeah, those are my five, the five worst movies I saw last year, and please don't ever watch them, like, I'm saving you the trouble, I'm telling you right now, if you ever see these movies showing anywhere for some reason, don't watch them. But what do you think about these worst films? Have you seen any of them? If you agree, if you disagree, whatever you think, please leave a comment below, and I look forward, of course, to having more conversations with you guys. See you around.